what the forum provides. If you're an author of the plugin or the theme, you're gonna be auto-subscribed to that forum automatically. Um, but you can also click that button whenever you like and you're gonna get that email every single time. Whether it's a new thread uh, or it's a reply to the thread, you're gonna get that email. Um, there's also, and not a lot of people realize this, there's also an RSS feed for your thread. And that's always found at wordpress.org slash support slash plugin or slash theme if you have a theme slash your slug slash feed. And that's actually just um, a default feature of BBPress, which is what the forums are run on, and WordPress itself. <coughs> but that is a useful thing to be able to monitor because you know you could do a lot of different things with RSS feeds. Um, so out of the box, this is really all you have is email. And you know that we all love email, right? Not really, not so much. It's not a really useful and effective way to be monitoring threads all the time, but it is there. You do get a notification one way or another. You just have to be constantly monitoring your email for those, for those uh, emails in particular. And if it happened last Thursday and you were here at work, WordCamp all this week, you come in on Monday or Tuesday, you look at your email and it's like way down the list and you missed it. So that's why in the tips and tricks I have a couple other suggestions for how to do this a little bit better than that. Um, cool. That one's pretty straightforward. I don't think there's much reason for questions there. How to leverage user roles. Yes, there are user roles with the support forums. Uh, it's not super obvious, but they are there. So types of user roles, obviously, when you become a plugin author or a theme author, they now really tag that really clearly. When I, every time I uh, reply to a thread, it's gonna say right there, plugin author. <coughs> <coughs> Not on every forum, only on my forums. Um, and I find that really useful because the users, they want to know when the response that they're getting is authoritative or not. It's not like, oh, I played with this plugin this weekend and this is what worked for me by some random person, which can happen and that's great and fine and everything. But when the plugin author actually says, that's a great feature, I'm gonna consider it. For now, here's a workaround for you. The, the users typically are really, really thankful and, and happy to hear directly from the plugin author directly. So that's actually a very useful feature. You don't have to do anything about it. It's just sitting there ready for you. There is another new feature that, that just was implemented, I believe either late last year or early this calendar year, uh, which you can now add uh, plugin support to your, your uh, forum. You can add people directly as plugin support. And when they reply, they get a batch now that doesn't say plugin author, but it says plugin support. This is again being able to indicate that this is somebody who really knows what they're doing um, th about this plugin. They, they're very familiar with it. They know how to provide support for it. Um, it's a really useful feature um, that we use really well um, on most of our plugins. Lastly, there's also a plugin Contributor, I'm going to show just a little bit how you can add people as a plugin support uh, in just a second. There's also a plugin contributor, um, and these are people who have committed code to the plugin directly in one way or another. This is not done through the .org interface in any way whatsoever. This is done actually in the um, header of your plugin or theme code. So you have a section in your plugin header that says plugin name. You give it the name. You also have a, uh, an item that says contributors, and there you can do a comma separated list of the handles of any of your contributors to your plugin. One of the side effects of adding contributors to your plugin is that when they reply in the support forums, they'll be labeled as a contributor to your plugin. Again, that just provides the users with a little bit additional um, satisfaction or guarantee that the reply from this person is valuable and authoritative in that way. So real quick, how do you add plugin support roles? It's pretty straightforward, but it's in this thing called the advanced view. Uh, on your plugin or your theme, you have all the tabs across the top, and in the right-hand sidebar, there's a little tiny link that says advanced view. Click on advanced view, and once you're there, you're gonna see in the sidebar, you're gonna see um, the authors, you're gonna see the contributors, and now there's also a section called support reps. And all you do is essentially put their, their WordPress.org handle of that person into that box and click add. And they get added whether they like it or not. So 
Roy Sivan, add him to all of your plugins tonight. Um, he will love that. Um, I wish he was here to enjoy my trolling, but uh, whatever, Roy, I'm going to just tro troll him somewhere. He's one of the organizers. Tomorrow. I'll get him. You said at Matt Cromwell? <laughs> I said, <laughs> no, I didn't say at Matt Cromwell. Um, I, I do enjoy support, but not that much. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's a great feature. Any questions about user roles whatsoever? It's pretty straightforward, but it's a nice feature. Is that news to anybody? Is that like, oh, I didn't know that happened at all? Oh, great. I'm preaching. Okay, see, brave, courageous. Everybody else is lying. They're like, they were like, <laughs> but I'm not telling Matt that. Uh, all right. All right, tips and tricks. This is what everybody's here for, right? Tips and tricks. Because we all are more or less familiar with the forums um, and in one fashion or another, but I got some tips and tricks up my sleeve. And if you didn't um, go to the slides already, um, uh, go ahead and do that. Slides.com slash Matt Cromwell slash WCLAX18. Um, and because I have a couple of links there that are going to be useful for you. Um, going beyond what the forum supplies. First thing, I was talking about how you're going to get all of those emails. This is a, this is a really simple one. I make sure that I have a, a Gmail filter. Uh, I use Gmail. You know, every major email pr provider does filters now in one way or another. But I make sure I have a filter so that all of the WordPress.org support forum related emails go to one place and it's not my inbox. I don't want them going into my inbox in any way, but I do want to make sure that they're all in one place so that I can see what's new and what's not all the time. So when I get in, I, basically all you need to do is say it's from no reply at word, wordpress.org and then has the words wordpress.org forums hard brackets. Unfortunately, that means that all emails from the entire forums will go in there. Uh, there's, I've looked desperately for the ability to be like, if it's from give, then do this folder. And if it's from something else, do this folder. Again, it's a limitation of the .org forum that basically all they do is just this. I'd love it if they would do like no reply plus give WP, give WP at WordPress.org or something like that. That would be really useful. Um, but that's what they provide. So a filter, a Gmail filter is a really great way to make sure that you could see what's going on all, at all times. And the reason why this is really useful is because it's going to get the new threads and the replies as well. So for me, this is my authoritative place where I am doing all of my free support is in that one mailbox, essentially. Another trick, I mentioned that uh, it, there is an RSS um, feed on all the forums. You can do lots of things with RSS. I personally make sure that that RSS is going into our Slack channel. <coughs> because often um, we're going to need to talk about whatever ticket that is. And we don't necessarily want to do that publicly on the forums. So it goes straight into here, into our Slack channel. And we call it free support. And here you could see that um, that we are uh, we're chatting about it right there. And we also have the system where if this uh, new thread has a reply, then we put a little speech bubble as a reply. And if it's closed out, we put a little check mark that it's closed out. And that's a little system for us so that we can make sure that we're tracking whether things are done or not. Um, I like it. The limitation of the RSS feed is that it's only going to give you the new threads. It doesn't give you the replies to the threads. That's the limitation of the RSS feed. That's why the Gmail filter is uh, really, really necessary as well. Between the Gmail filter and the RSS feed, I pretty much have all my bases covered. And it's where I work. I'm always in my email. I'm always in Slack. It's where I work. I don't have to be going over to the, to the support forum in order to figure out what's going on. I know what's going on exactly where I'm working all the time anyway. This one is magic. Prevent duplicate replies. Um, I found this through being on the WordPress uh, Slack channel. Um, there is a, a, a channel in the, in the WordPress Slack channel called Forums, where all the moderators are, and they talk about what's happening on the forums. <coughs> and somebody shared this amazing uh, hack, essentially. Um, if you are on the, the slides, this is the link right here, which will explain exactly how to do this. 
But what this does is if I go to the WordPress.org forum and I see this up here, that means that somebody else who also has this hack installed. I don't want to go into detail about how it works. That link has everything that you need about it. But if somebody else who also has that done um, is on this thread right now, then I know that they're most likely addressing that issue right now live. And I don't have to then also do it. Because in the past, that would happen to me and my business partner all the time. We both end up replying to a new thread almost at the same time. It was fine when we gave the exact same answer. It was a little uncomfortable when we gave conflicting answers. Um, so especially avoid duplicate conflicting answers from two different plugin authors. That's no fun. Um, so, but this has really, really been great. I'm logged in as myself here, but I'm seeing that my senior support tech, Ben, is, log is logged in and looking at that thread right at the moment. So I'm not going to touch it. Does that make sense? That one to me was, that one's, Excellent, awesome stuff. Last one, rich content in your replies. Um, WordPress by default supports OEmbed, but the forums, they specifically restrict um, which OEmbeds work, but a lot of OEmbeds do work. Um, so often you're like, oh, I really need to show them a screenshot, and there's no tool in order to insert an image. Um, well, you could just paste a URL of an image and it's going to show up if it's on the right platform. So a couple of good examples. Um, I mean, I don't know if you're into SlideShare anymore. I don't know if that's still a thing, but SlideShare still works. Um, if you just paste a SlideShare URL into the forums, if you want to give them like a step-by-step, -step, step one, do this, and here's a screenshot of it. Step two, do this, and here's a screenshot of it. That might be a really good way to do that um, without uh, you know, making a really, really long, complicated thread that they maybe will never read. Um, SoundCloud, maybe you would just want to talk it out. Maybe if you're, you're not so much of a typer, maybe you broke all your fingers. I don't know. But you can um, create a SoundCloud audio file, paste that in there, and, um, and they'll be able to listen to that right there in the forum itself. These are live screenshots. I did, I did a big test on one of my plugin threads. I just was like testing OEmbed, and I pasted a whole bunch of OEmbeds in there. Um, and these are so live screenshots of, of it working. Um, SoundCloud works. Vimeo works, which is great if you want to do a quick uh, screencast of the problem and how you're fixing it or how they misunderstood and they need to do it a different way. That's a great one. YouTube as well is also always helpful and relevant. You just paste those URLs in there and they're going to show up automatically. Here's a more um, complete list, the one I mentioned about images. CloudUp is a service that Automatic actually owns. Um, <coughs> I really like it because I use my screenshot tool, and all I do with in CloudUp, I just I log into CloudUp, and I, my screenshot tool takes a copy of the screenshot, and I just paste it straight onto the screen in CloudUp, and it uploads that screenshot immediately. I don't have to save locally and then upload and all that. I just paste the image into CloudUp, and it saves immediately, and it has a URL, and I could just paste that screenshot that CloudUp URL into the forum, and the picture shows up automatically. So you're not going to see a preview of any of these embeds when you're writing. They're just gonna, they're going to show up after you post it. So cool. Questions about any of those tips and tricks? Nice. I blew your minds to silence. <laughs> All right. I like my audience passive. I'm just kidding. Um, Typically, I like to hear like, amen. That's what I like to hear. But, um, last thing, you can know the forums perfectly, backwards and forwards, inside and out. You can know how to do all the OEmbed stuff. You could have 10 times more tricks than I have. But if you're a jerk, you're still going to do terrible support. So in order to really, because related to the question earlier about reputation and what are the downsides of the, of the costs of the forum, this is all public and your name's on it. And if you're for working for a company, you're going to make a negative reflection of your company. Uh, one thing we've been working on internally as uh, for our support team is a, a support manual, how we do support in a way that really matters. And uh, we have a lot more resources than just this one. But this is our tone guide, and I feel like this is really, really beneficial and useful for providing free support because it keeps you from being that jerk who's like, well, why do you even use WordPress? Go somewhere else, you know? I see replies like that. It happens all the time. 
Um, it's really, really not helpful. Um, so, CREW, it's an acronym if you do pick that up. I, I try to make it off, whatever, it's an acronym. Um, confident, not apologetic. Um, when people come and they're like, I installed your plugin and it broke everything. Um, don't apologize all over yourself for their situation. Um, generally speaking, uh, when you take code and you put it on your website, you are responsible for it. Um, and you, you know what your plugin does and doesn't do. Um, and so you don't need to apologize if you created a, tr a problem in one way or another. Instead, start off with confidence and say, hey, uh, that's terrible. I'm, I can't believe that happened. Um, but you came to the right place and I can help you out, no problem. Start off with confidence. Let them know, give them assurances that they're in the right place and that you are the best person available to resolve that issue. Results-oriented, not argumentative. This is the one that I see probably most often in the WordPress world. Um, when folks um, get uh, support requests that are either very, very menial or perhaps the person is slightly agitated, our tendency, our natural tendency as, as humans is to get defensive and to be like, well, why are you using this plugin? Leave me alone. What do you want? Um, do everything you can in your power and in your ability to never be argumentative. Don't tell them that they're wrong. Uh, don't tell them that they, they got it all backwards. Just focus on the result that needs to happen. What needs to happen in order for them to have success with your plugin? Just focus on the result, never on defending yourself. Um, you don't need to defend yourself. You know what you built. You believe in what you built. Let, it, let that part alone. Focus on the fix. Educational, not haughty or overly technical. Uh, this is another one that's really common with developers who developed an awesome tool and end up finding out that they have to do support. Um, they say, well, this is happening because your PHP is all messed up and it's a, you have this other plugin doing a weird MySQL command in, and the user is like, I don't care what you're talking about, just fix my problem. Um, instead of all of that, be educational. Let them know this does happen from time to time under certain circumstances, and this is how we resolve those things, step by step, one, two, three. Again, that's results oriented, and that's not over explaining or trying to go over their head in order for you to establish some sort of like weird technical dominance over them. Um, instead, it's really just being here it is, one, two, three. This is how we get it done. Confident, results oriented, educational and welcoming, not thankful. This is a weird one. This one took us a long time internally. Um, similar to being not apologetic, you don't need to be like overly thankful. Oh, thank you so much for using my plugin. Nobody in the world is using my plugin, but you are. Thank you so much for being here. Um, that does sometimes come across as pandering, um, which is really bad. And sometimes it just comes across as like, yes, I'm the user and I'm doing you a big favor. So now it's time for you to do me a favor. Um, being overly thankful sometimes comes out kind of negatively. Instead, tell, like, evoke a welcoming attitude. Um, you know what? I'm so glad you're using the plugin because this is going to be really good for you. This is going to change the way you do things. Um, welcome to the family. Um, be welcoming and not necessarily so thankful. Um, and again, it's like thankfulness is a good thing overall. And so it's a, it, kind of a mind switch to start thinking about welcoming instead of thankfulness. Um, but it definitely brings results because you show that it also is related to confidence. Uh, welcoming is about confidence as well. You are in the right place. Welcome to this plugin. We're going to solve your problem and we're gonna get it done. Does that make sense? Cool. That's how we get stuff done in our department um, and that's our, our, our crew, our tone guide. Any questions about the tone guide? Any thoughts, questions, comments? Yes? Say it again, how many years? How many years? How many years? I'm sorry. There's some archive process. Oh, how how long do do the threads stay up there? 
uh, essentially the question is how long do the support threads stay on um, WordPress.org website? Yeah. Um, two parts. There's a couple milestones. Essentially, I believe it's after one year. If the thread has been on there for one year, the thread is automatically closed out for no more comments. Um, and, but it's still there. And it stays there for forever. Um, they don't have a process right now where they automatically delete old threads. Which, honestly, is pretty fascinating because like that everything WordPress, you can go to that thread and then go to like the very last thread that ever, and that you're going to find threads from like 2010, you know, or 2005, like super old threads. And um, those can sometimes be really, really educational. Um, sometimes. Or it's just, you know, I'm also a history buff, so I just think it's cool. So good question. Other questions? Yes, in the back. Mm. She said the tone guide is fantastic, and after that, I just was happy. So I don't remember. Um, no. How do you provide? How do you keep stamina for support? For free support, specifically. Um, I think there's two parts to that uh, question, or there's two two different answers to that question. One is there's definitely a sense in which you need to make sure that you're not the only one doing free support. No matter who you are, no matter how small your plugin is or whatever, um, try to always bring in somebody else who can do support with you in one way or another. That definitely helps a lot. Because sometimes you're going to go on vacation and you don't want a big backlog of support. Or are there, uh, other times you're just tired um, and you're just not feeling it. Or you know that if I answer support today, I'm going to rip somebody a new one in the forum. So please protect me from that by you doing support today. Like those types of things are definitely um, ways to prevent yourself from being really detrimental to your, your support for sure. Um, so those are like taking breaks and having friends. Um, those are common things. Then on the other side, um, this is not the, the answer that a lot of people um, like so much, but Sometimes you just don't have it. Um, and sometimes you're just not made for it. Um, there is, when I'm hiring support technicians, I really don't care how well they can troubleshoot uh, a PHP function or a JavaScript console error so, as much as whether or not they enjoy teaching people. Um, you do have to have a bit of a helpfulness teaching mindset in order to continue doing it. Um, especially because a lot of the questions you're going to get, you will have answered it 25 times um, before you end up having to answer it another 100 times. Um, it, you're going to answer the same question over and over again. And what you will find, the people who are geared for it and really enjoy it, what they'll find is that answer that they give will actually start to get better. And that really turns them on. That really, they like that. Um, they like being able to just keep chiseling at their skill and getting continually better. And um, yeah, so I do think it can be taught in some ways. Um, but sometimes it's just kind of like you're either that kind of person or you're not. That's been my experience, at least. Good questions. I actually, I really enjoy answering the general support questions as well. So, any other general support questions? Yeah. Let's do one because you've already asked several, and then I see another one in the back. What's your first one? Yeah. The question is essentially how do you balance the time you spend on support versus how much you spend on your product? Um, I typically tend to challenge developers who are developers first and support second. I tend to challenge them a lot that they should spend the best hours of their day on support first. Um, because the time you spend on support is going to inform the way you code. It's going to inform the features that you build. It's going to inform the way that you think about your product. Um, in, in new and different ways. Um, and you want to make sure that you are your best self. Um, 
you know, it's not, it's no fun to be coding when you're tired and things like that for sure. But if you're doing support when you're tired and angry and pissed off and not enough coffee, like it's just not good. So I really challenge folks to prioritize support first and development second for those two reasons, because you don't want to be a jerk and because support will make you a better developer. Um, besides that, the exact balance is really up to you. I have a presentation I did here last year about scaling support, which is all about figuring out how much time it takes to actually do support. Um, so ping me later afterwards and I'll point you to that, which would be a really good resource for just like analyzing how you do support and how much time you need and how to make sure that you have that time available to do it. So, John. We, um, the nuance, the correct answer is we only provide free support on the forums. Um, the actual answer is we provide free support wherever we interact with people. Because um, I hate providing support on social media, but guess what I have to do a lot is provide support on social media. Um, and we do have a contact form that we monitor religiously, and a lot of support happens that way as well. Um, but the reason why I always say free support is here is because that is where free support is, whether I want it to be or not. The free support is there. If you have a free plugin or a free theme on WordPress.org, the free support is there and you can't turn it off. Um, it's going to happen whether you like it or not. And it's public whether you like it or not. So you can't avoid it. Uh, you can. I just don't think it's smart to avoid it. Um, and you could try to funnel, but then you're going to spend time funneling instead of supporting. So meet them where they're at, even if it's Twitter DMs. I hate it, but even if it's there. Um, Facebook Messenger has gotten a ton better, actually. It's almost like an inbox with, like, you can assign. To, I know it's terrible, but... Um, it, yeah, it's still, it's still there are, it, it does actually work a lot better. Twitter is, nah. But anyway, meet them where they are, support them where they are. Um, and sometimes I support them as little as possible there and say, that's a really good question, it's a bit complicated, I can help you a lot better on the forum if you do that. Um, I will funnel, funnel them to the forum rather than to our contact form. The great thing though, if you do do free support somewhere else, is you capture those emails. Um, they can opt out and opt in and those kinds of things. But I don't see that as a big enough benefit because I can't monitor super well how much time is spent over there. So, good questions. Um, there's nobody here, so I mean, should we party or should I be all done? Or, um, yeah, let's do a, yeah, question. Yep. Yep. There's two. The whole WordPress.org support forum is actually built on a plugin called BBPress. Um, and, and it is available for free for anybody to download and use for support if they like. And you could do that um, publicly like the WordPress.org support forum does. Or you can lock it down that they can only ask questions if they log into your site. Either way, you could do lots of things with it. It does need customization in order to really, for it to really be a good support for them. Um, but it is there and it's available. There's another one that I do like that has some limitations, but it's called Awesome Support. Um, it is free and it has some paid add-ons as well. Um, but I recommend that one as well. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and be done because uncertainty kills me. So thank you everybody so much. Yeah.